Okay, is that all right? Is, is that okay by way of introduction? <coughs> well, let me then uh, try and outline what I would like to do uh, this morning. I want to try and do sort of, there are two segments, I think, Lena, that I'm in, involved with, yeah? And uh, before morning tea, I want to try and share with you the sort of the framework that we're using uh, for, for school improvement. Uh, we will continue to go deeper in this as we continue to sort of work, work together. But I sort of, we spent a lot of time uh, in the regional office trying to develop this, this framework. And I want to begin to share that with you. So you've got a sort of a frame, a frame of reference. Um, and then I'm going to move on fairly quickly to talk about uh, schools which have really made a difference. Now, I don't think there is a discrete body of knowledge about how to improve schools, but we do have some examples from, from around the world of, actually how, of schools which have actually made a massive di difference right against the odds. And what, what I want to try and do uh, with the, the help of Trish Franey is to give you a few examples uh, from our experiences which then you can sort of reflect against, all right? The last thing I want is that Trish and I are going to tell you what to do or what we've done sort of uh, works. What we want to try and do is to set up a sort of a fairly concrete example that you can critique and then by in the process of critiquing begin to sort of throw your own work uh, into, into sharper focus. And we'll try and do that uh, until sort of uh, a morning tea. After morning tea, um, I want to try and just sort of talk through a couple of the main foci, foci? Yeah, foci that we'll be using uh, during the, uh, the, the, the project. I want to talk a little bit about the, the emphasis, the unrelenting emphasis we want to place on uh, learning and teaching. Um, and then I want to talk a little bit about the sort of the organization of the program uh, inside your own schools. And then to do a little bit of diagnostic work in terms of you know, where all that fits in terms of where you are uh, in your school and, and where you're going to go. So is that what, what you want me to do, Lena? Is that okay? Is that what, what you told me to do? Okay. All right. Okay. All right then. So are you happy with that? All right. And then we'll fi finish about... It's, it's five o'clock we're finishing, is that? <laughs> we finish, I think, with lunch about, sort of, uh, about uh, one o'clock. And my style is that well, what I try and do is that I'll sort of talk a little bit and then I'll get you to talk on tables, get you to talk among yourselves and then to sort of question me or make some statements ar around the room. So although I'm standing here, um, you know, we'll, we'll make it as sort of inter as interactive as we, as we possibly can. Well, I thought, I'd, I thought I'd start by showing you some of my holiday snaps. Um, <laughs> and... Uh, the one thing that Lena didn't say in terms of int introducing me is that I've been fortunate enough uh, to have uh, another career, and uh, that has been as a mountain guide, a professional mountain guide. And uh, I've been really, it's been a great privilege to be able to sort of work in education, but also sort of work uh, in the mountains. And this is a picture of myself uh, on the north col of Mount Everest, uh, taken, I think, about uh, four years ago. I'm with here my eldest son, who was 15 at the time. His name is Yeroon, um, and he was the youngest person to get to the North Col of Everest. It's about 23,500 feet, uh, over 7,000 meters. Um, and what a moment, I think, for a dad and a son to stand together there. I think it was probably with the first dad and son to do that. But anyway, let's not, uh, not go into my... I've got lots of holiday snaps, but, uh, but that's not the reason for, for showing it to you. Uh, the, the reason for showing you that slide is to explain why I was uh, on the North Col of Everest uh, a few years ago. And the reason was this young man here. His name is uh, Paul Silito. He's now in his mid-30s. Mid and he's a service user with uh, a charity called McIntyre Care, which is the biggest charity in England uh, for the mentally disabled. Uh, Paul exhibits uh, the full autistic spectrum. We're not exactly certain what the diagnosis is, but that's how he, that, that's how, that's how he presents. And um, yeah, he, would have, <laughs> he would struggle a, a little bit being in you know, a group like this. But he's got uh, an obsession with uh, mountaineering and, cl and climbing. And uh, I've been privileged, I guess, over the last uh, 20 years or so to climb with him and uh, his friends and colleagues uh, in a number of different settings. But he, had a, he has a real fixation uh, about uh, Everest. And, uh, uh, he, um, and so uh, I thought, well, perhaps it was, was probably too difficult uh, to get him to the summit of Everest. 
but I thought the North Col, which nowadays is regarded as being a mountaineering objective uh, in its own right, uh, was something that was actually quite, uh, quite suitable for him. And this is a picture of uh, Paul uh, just below the North, the North Col uh, with me.